Hey there survivors, I'm Virtual Paradise and in this video I'm going to be going through a detailed explanation of the graphics settings for Arc on PC and uh, how you can achieve better frame rates and what impacts the most. I only have a mid-range sort of system but I'll start off with my specs anyway. I've got a GTX 1066GB which is overclocked a bit, 16GB of 1866MHz DDR3 RAM and an i5-4690K processor which is overclocked to 4.2GHz. As they've been optimising the game and the graphics, I've had to be tweaking my settings every now and again. Anyway, I've uh, noticed certain graphics settings performing better, and uh, some worse in some cases. But it kind of varies from update to update at the moment, so we'll see how it runs on full release. Really looking forward to when they implement DirectX 12 as well, because there's supposed to be a 20-25% to 25 performance gain. So this is about how my game looks with the settings that I'm currently running at. Uh, you can see all the usage statistics in the top corner. I normally use an ultra-wide monitor, but uh, I'm using just a regular 1080p 60Hz monitor for this, as it seemed like a good middle ground for the video. The frame rate that you're actually targeting obviously depends on your display. If you're using a 60Hz monitor, you want to be able to get around or over 60 frames a second for it to look smooth all the time. On my display, I still get quite a bit of screen tearing on Arc when it goes above the frame limit. Uh, so if you want to try and avoid that, I usually turn on VSync in my graphics card control panel, which in my case is NVIDIA control panel, but whatever software yours came with. We'll use this sort of stretch of beach, and then up in the trees to the left, um, as a bit of a benchmark, I guess, because there'll be quite a lot of stuff which is rendering in when you're flying along. I choose to use the Pteranodon as well, because they are probably the laggiest dino to use. <laughs> especially when you're doing the C-spin because of that extra speed pickup. So uh, that should help stress it a little bit as well. Right, so this is the settings I'm currently running at the moment. You've got world tile buffers is normally advised to have on Epic if you have over 4GB of VRAM. View distance I like on medium so I can see players and dinos behind rocks before they render in. Anti-aliasing I have on high, post-processing on medium. Shadows I usually have down because players can hide in the shadows. And textures on medium as well because low looks garbage. <laughs> also sky quality all the way down and resolution scale all the way up so you get the sharpest picture. Ground clutter and mesh level all the way down. An isotropic filter in high quality on. Screen space ambient occlusions on. I also have high quality LODs because you can see things a bit sharper in the distance. Extra level streaming distance, colour grading, and low quality level streaming as well. Now resolution scale, you can pull it down and you can see that you'll gain quite a lot of FPS from it. Because <laughs> it's rendering it at a lower resolution now, even though you're still selected as 1080p. But it's probably a good idea to have your resolution scale all the way up or as high as you can manage. And then set the rest of your graphic settings around that so you get a nice sharp image. Right, now to show you the impact of view distance, we'll start on low. And I'll just fly over here and back again, just so you can gauge the FPS dips as well because of uh, different areas. Now we'll put the view distance up to epic. We'll just jump straight up there. I normally have it on medium, but this will be the extreme. So as you can see, it nearly half the frame rate initially. It's gone back up to nearly 60 again, but when we start moving and it'll start rendering in along the beach, especially in quite a fast mount like the Pteranodon, you can see it's dropped below 40 already. I don't think it'll drop below 30. No, it hit 30, just above. But no. And then this is epic view distance, just running around on foot, I guess, on a beach. See, I'm only getting 30 to 35 FPS on average. It's jumped up a little bit now, but it's probably just come near the water. See how much difference just changing it to high makes.
actually a fair bit. Holding above 60, no problem. Well, I say that, just got a little dip. But it's in a, about the same area as we've been having a dip anyway. I think that's just a, uh, a tile border. And then this is running around that beach on a high view distance. Again, the odd little dip, but very playable. Running through the woods, I thought was going to be a little bit more taxing, but it seems to be handling it absolutely fine as well in comparison. We'll do the anti-aliasin next. Start it off on low. Now, if you don't know what anti-aliasin is, it's basically where you can see the pixels, where they make a little tiny jagged edge of a straight line in a distance, it tries and smooths them out so it looks like a completely smooth line. So the higher quality the anti-aliasin, the smoother the lines should be. If your graphics card can handle it well anyway, it's usually best to have it up on high or epic because it sharpens those things in the distance. You can make little things out sometimes, even if they're only a few pixels big. So between this, high quality and isotropic filtering and high quality LODs, plus your resolution scale all the way up, you should be able to make things out reasonably easy in the far distance, even if they're only a couple of pixels big. But as you see from this clip, I lose around an average 10 frames a second. Post-processing is a very impacting one, but it's also a very important one for how nice your game actually looks overall. So if I put it on low, and as you can see, it kind of looks like the shader model 4 launch commands or the DirectX 10 commands, and uh, I haven't even got them on. But you can see how impacting it is from the frame rate boost that I've got. I was getting between 90 and 100 frames a second then, it's dropping now as more stuff's rendering in, but not bad. Bumping post-processing up to medium just really brings a bit more life into the trees, gives it that extra bit of layer of shading. And can kind of really make a difference. It no longer looks so ugly. <laughs> but then just to show you the differences, trees are very good uh, to demonstrate it. So I'll just put it up to high. And then epic. And you'll see it just basically looks like more detail. So that is why it is more stressful on your graphics card. But if your graphics card can handle it, then it can make your game look very nice. I'll be sticking with medium anyway. There's a lot of difference between medium and low, but not that much difference between medium and epic up close. Just to show that little benchmark stress with post-processing on high instead of medium like I normally have it. And I normally can't stick easily above 60 FPS when it's on high. It's actually doing a pretty good job this time. <laughs> ah, it is lowering. I thought it was just the dip, but no, it is lowering still. Shadows can be very demanding. They are on most games. So I'll just show you what these are like on Epic. This is just general shadows. And as you can see, I'm hovering around 50, 55 FPS. 45. If you saw as well, I got my post processing back to medium, so this is the area where I'm normally getting around 70 FPS. If I steer towards the trees, there'll be a lot more shadows rendering in over here, so we should notice some significant FPS drops. Yep, going below 50 already. Will it go below 40? Hovering around 40 to 45. It's playable, but it's not smooth and ideal. But still, that is epic. So let's put them on low just for a stark contrast comparison. Right, now this is with shadows on high. 
same sort of stretch and as you can see it was going above 70 like it was when I had shadows on low but dropping below 60 when I go towards the trees oh and again dropping right into the 40s so yeah they're pretty demanding on high but they weren't on the beach as much if having the game as sharp as possible isn't that important to you, then if you want to get a few extra FPS, you can just down your resolution scale just a little bit. You'll be surprised. You'll gain some FPS, and it'll be consistent FPS as well as you're flying along. There we go. See, I'm jumping way above 70 now. I literally gained 15 to 20 FPS just by putting my resolution scale down about 10%. So have a play around with it. I'm not sure if it's an error in the settings or something at the moment, but Terrain Shadows doesn't seem to do anything. It didn't do anything on its own, so I thought it might have worked with General Shadows. So I put General Shadows on Epic and then Medium and now on High and I've been changing Terrain Shadows and going and looking at different terrain and nothing's changing. Right, now for textures. Let's jump straight to Epic. So, you know, I'm getting around 60 to 70 to 75 frames a second around here. Now, textures is a weird one. I'm sure it impacts more when you're close to a lot of stuff, because the textures are going to be close up. But when you're just cruising around, they don't seem to have that much impact. Now I'll put the textures down to low, and then I'll fly back the same way that I came from. And straight away you can see it's holding more consistently above 70. Oop, there's that little dip area. <laughs> World tile border or something. And whoa, it's hit 90. I use this Pteranodon's head close up to show the difference between the different texture settings. See that massive difference between just low and medium? The amount of detail in medium compared to low. And then you go up to high. Barely anything. And then epic is almost the same. It's just a tiny bit sharper. But it seems to be a massive difference between low and medium. So if you can handle medium textures well, I'd probably advise keeping them on medium just so you get more detail. Let's see what an impact sky quality has all the way up. Especially as it's raining at the moment as well. It should hopefully make a bit of a difference. And now for the ground clutter test. See how taxing this is. So I'll put the density all the way up and then we'll gradually move out the clutter distance and you'll see it gradually appear around my feet. And we were around 65 to 70 FPS a minute ago. And we've now dropped down to 45. 50. So we lost about 20% performance there just by having all the grass visible. If we move the clutter and the distance halfway now, just to see how taxing that is in comparison. Well, definitely a lot more playable. Dropping into the 50s, but looks like it's generally staying around the 60 mark. But again, it's good that these things are on sliders, so you can actually find a nice balance for them if you want them on. The mesh level of detail is how detailed the meshes appear in the distance on trees and rocks and other sort of landscape terrain objects. Can you see the quality change as I apply it? From the air, though, is where it becomes a bit of a handy tool, as if you have the mesh level of detail all the way down, the trees are a little bit more two-dimensional, so when you're flying over them, you can scout out bases a little bit easier. But if you have the mesh level of detail all the way up, the trees are a little bit more fluffier and you can't quite see through them as easy. 
but if you're going for a better looking game then you'll want a higher mesh quality detail so everything looks a bit better in the distance when you're approaching it. Not sure if you'll be able to see the difference in this video, but if I put high quality and isotropic filtering off, you should be able to see that things aren't quite as sharp in the distance. And when you're trying to snipe players or just scout around for things, you need things sharp in the distance. So I'll always have that one on. So motion blur is a funny one. Some people like motion blur, some people don't. But in this game, motion blur doesn't seem to appear unless you actually have post-processing on Epic. And I'll show you now. So I've got motion blur on. I got post processing on low as you can tell because the game looks disgusting. <laughs> and as you can see I just went between low and then medium and you can't see any blur or I can't anyway really in the Pteranodon's spin. And it's normally very prominent in the Pteranodon or any flyer just because their wings are so animated. And then that's on high and still can't even see any motion blur when you've got it on high. But then as soon as you put it on epic... Huh, you see it there in the wings straight away in the freeze frame. See how clear that is? It's kind of strange that motion blur doesn't seem to show up on low, medium on high, or high, but it does on epic. Sometimes it can help depending on what frame rate you're getting, because it can help gel frames together and make it feel like you're getting a better frame rate than you actually are. Film grain doesn't seem to impact, but I don't really notice it anyway. Uh, but distance field ambient occlusion, that's basically like the little reflections that come from light sources in the distance, so you don't notice it that much. But screen space ambient occlusions is quite important, I think, as if I switch, if you switch it off like I did here, everything looks a bit whitewashed and you just can't quite make out as much contrast and details. This is with distance field shadowing on. It's quite demanding though, hovering around 50 FPS. And it's different to the general shadows as well, but they're both quite demanding, so if you have them both on as well, it's going to stack and you're going to lose quite a bit of performance. Which is a shame, because they can both look quite nice. But again, having a lot of shadows on can make it easier for players to hide in PvP. So I usually like to have shadows to a minimal. But as you can see here, having the general shadows up and the distance field shadowing on makes me lose around 20 FPS, which is quite big. Alright, let's try high quality materials. Need to restart. Right, this is going to basically be the benchmark beach run. And this is same as my original settings, but just with high quality materials on. And it actually feels pretty smooth. Right, we'll stack that now with subsurface scattering. Same run again. Losing a little bit more with subsurface scattering, but it's not bad. Now for high quality video effects. And for some reason we're holding better. <laughs> Light shafts and light bloom are pretty self-explanatory, but the light shafts are just the shafts of light that are coming through the trees that you can see. And then the bloom is basically like the glow that the light makes. They're not very taxing, but they get in the way of PvP a bit. It does make the Pteranodon's wings look mighty nice in the sun, though. Low quality level streaming normally gives a performance boost, so if I turn it off, I should notice a bit of a performance drop. I was holding around 60, 
It's definitely doing better than it used to, but there is definitely still about a 10% performance drop there. Right, now this is using one of the popular launch commands that people normally use to get more FPS, which is SM4. Using an older shader model should be less demanding on a graphics card. I'm assuming it uses shader model 5 or 6 or something now, but uh, as you can see, like I commented earlier about the low post-processing setting, it kind of looks a bit like that, but just a bit muddier again. But on average, getting between about 90 and 120 FPS. Just for a comparison now, I thought I'd just use the D3D10 command without SM4 this time, just to see what the difference was like. And I'll do the benchmark beach stretch run. <laughs> I'll sort of zigzag a little bit more on this one, just to see if there's any variation in frame drops when you're just going through this bit. Now this time I'm using the D3D and SM4 launch command this time, just to see how they both work together. My settings are basically the same as they were before, so will tile buffers epic and everything pretty much how I had it before, but I will turn them all down to low just to see what kind of FPS boost we can get in a couple of minutes. No matter what setting we use though, there's that little area that I've just flown past that seems to be, I don't know, like a bit where it loads in an extra chunk of the world or something, because even on these launch set settings it briefly drops below 50 FPS for some reason. I'll turn on my settings down low and I'll turn my advanced settings off as well just to see what kind of boost we get. I'll head back over where I started now and fly back over here so it's about the same sort of run. So you probably wouldn't get as erratic dips in FPS as this if you were on foot. It's just because I'm on the Pteranodon. If you really want to boost your FPS just a little bit more, you can always adjust your resolution scale. Maybe try just sort of 5-10% just to see at first, but just as an extreme, I pulled it down about a third, and you can see kind of how fuzzy it looks, especially the things in the distance and the edges of trees, etc. And it doesn't give as much of a boost to FPS as I used to get from it but it might vary on your cpu and your graphics card but uh i'll just show you what it's like on low just to see how show you how fuzzy it looks but i think it's much better to have your resolution scale up as high as possible preferably all the way and then match the rest of your graphic settings around that because you want your game to look as sharp as possible and you want to be able to make things out in the distance Right, I thought I'd just come over to the official server that I mainly play on and uh, in my dino pen you can see I'm getting just over 70 FPS but as soon as I turn all the names on it's actually quite mad that I lose about 25 to 30 FPS you know, that's over a third of my FPS gone just from names it's kind of strange there is a button as well I think now so you can only show names that are close to you but I can't remember what it is but there's a nice little tip anyway if you want some more FPS when you go doing stuff in the dino pen. So for the time being, I think this is quite a nice balance of settings.
The game looks pretty nice and it's still going to be easy to see people in dinos when it comes to PvP. As I play on an ultra wide monitor I normally play at that resolution 2560 by 1080 so I'll probably end up turning like the high quality materials and high quality video effects to gain a few FPS. Just because it is a little bit more pixels to push on an ultra wide. That's about it for my advice on the PC graphics settings for Arc anyway. I hope some of this information has been helpful and you understand the graphics settings and which settings are a bit more impacting a little bit more. And I hope you find a nice balance to your game so it looks nice and plays lovely and smooth. That's all we all want. Well thanks again survivors. Please leave a like and subscribe for regular art content and I shall catch you in the next one. Goodbye for now. Peace.